Okay, hi everyone. This is Yash, and in this video, we'll talk about prompt engineering. Uh, we'll talk, we'll talk about prompt engineering very practically, and we'll actually code few things, and we'll see how, uh, you know, uh, by improving prompts, we can actually improve the output as well. So for this, we'll be using Llama Llama 2 model. Uh, we'll load it locally, and uh, we'll do some experiments. We'll compare before and after. After doing some prompt engineering, how we, uh, how it's, uh, how the output is changed, and how we get the more better accurate answers. Uh, prompt engineering is basically giving better inputs to LLM so that we get more correct output. Whatever we desire, we actually get it through LLM by you know giving certain inputs in a certain way. It's uh, exper, it's it's proved uh, empirically uh, in the world of research that. Uh, it's better to give uh, the prompts in certain way to uh, to the LLMs so that we get better outputs. So we'll discuss few prompt engineering techniques before jumping into code. There is uh, one article uh, that you can go and read. So in Google, if we just uh, search for uh, prompt engineering, uh, the first uh, no, not the first. First is Wikipedia. Uh, so this prompt uh, prompting guide dot AI. This is what the website is, and uh, you see uh, there are uh, under these techniques tab there are already these uh, prompting techniques that uh, we can refer to and learn about. So I highly suggest uh, like it's a very good website to learn these things from. Uh, a lot of the examples that we'll go through are taken from this website as well. Uh, we'll we'll not go through all the techniques, but a uh, few of them in this uh, in this video. But uh, I'm just giving you the reference. This I'll, I'll put this link in the description as well. So let's get back to the code. Uh, so what we'll do is uh, we'll load the uh, Llama 2 model, specifically the 7 billion parameter and the chat version of it. So uh, you can see the previous videos as well. If you don't know how to, uh, you know, load it locally and what exactly is the difference uh, between the chat and the base model. Uh, so we have been using this uh, code uh, for past two videos now and you would be familiar with it uh, so uh, we have this small function which basically takes this model and tokenizer and gives the response it takes a prompt as input and gives us the response as output so uh, that's all so for this first prompting technique uh, we have uh, like let's let's take an example of classification of uh, text uh, based on its uh, sentiments so it will either be neutral negative or positive so uh, these INST tags we include uh, because we are using the Llama 2 chat version and uh, this prompt is basically called zero shot prompting where we uh, ask the question directly to the model. We don't give any uh, data or any uh, you know examples to the model. We just directly ask like uh, ask the model to classify it into, into uh, these classes and just give the input text directly uh, nothing else. So, so let's run it and uh, uh, and so, so till here it is the input. This is the output that we get. Uh, it's classification positive. So for the text, I just love it. Let's uh, try changing the word <laughs> love to hate. It becomes negative. And if I maybe if I type uh, it was okay or something. Okay, so uh, it did give neutral. So it's classified. It can be classified as uh, as neutral. It does not convey any strong okay it's giving some explanations here and there but it's not like a previous uh, output it's kind of giving us the answer so it, it works fine you can say so zero shot prompting is uh, it's still very powerful you know like out of the box you can start solving problems with llms you can just directly uh, bombard it with questions and on and so on and you can still expect responses but in few cases it it still fails so even on this website, it says when zero shot doesn't work, it's recommended to provide demonstration examples. So there can be some cases, uh, maybe, uh, you know, for, for your particular case, it's intent classification. So there are particular intents that are there, which may or may not work correctly. So it's better to give some examples in the prompt. And then uh, it's called few shot prompting. So let me just uh, write uh, like the titles for this. Uh, just before moving on like we can take one more example of zero shot prompting so let's say like translation or something where we give a text and we are asking it to translate it to hindi uh, so when we run this uh, it says the hindi translation for the text i like eating is main khana pasand karta hu 
which is correct okay so uh, this is all about zero shot prompting we'll see few shot prompting now this is a zero shot direct just means directly giving the llmr question and expecting the task to be done sometimes it would fail that's why we go for few shot prompting so in few shot prompting let's take this example so this is a very interesting prompt again it's taken from this uh, website uh, prompt engineering guide uh, sorry prompting guide.ai uh, here what we are doing is we are saying like to do a fardoodle so we are creating a word and we are explaining its meaning to do a fardoodle means to jump up and down really fast an example of a sentence that uses the word fardoodle is so we are asking it to uh, frame a sentence using this word and we have given its meaning so what it does is it says like uh, fardoodle is not commonly recognized word in english uh, it's it's telling us maybe we misspelled it or something and it didn't uh, you know generate the sentence even after uh, us giving it the meaning so uh, and it's giving some suggestions some other suggestions and all fidget and all which is uh, not really useful to us so uh, this is where like the zero shot prompting may lack you know we are just directly giving it some instructions and expecting it to give output which it's not doing correctly this is how uh, we can uh, you know maybe uh, provide some examples like uh, let's say we give uh, two instructions this time uh, the way how llama 2 chat uh, prompts are formatted right it's like you give one instruction within these quotes INST INST tag and whatever comes outside this it's treated like the response that the model had given so uh, we can say that uh, we prompted once saying what poo is a small furry animal native to tanzania so we are creating another word an example of the sentence that uses word what poo is uh, and we can uh, you know tell the model that see before you had generated this kind of sentence so we are traveling to africa and we saw these very cute what poos <laughs> what happens is like uh, uh, model sees this and it says okay like this is how this is the question and this is the uh, response so similar to something like this i should also generate response that is that is basically what is going on here right so this is all prompt from year to year and uh, what we do is finally we give this uh, instruction again the fardoodle example and we just leave it here we don't give the response for this to see how it how it generates so let's uh, run this uh okay the the children were having a fardoodle competition in the playground so this time it generated a sentence we asked it to uh, you know generate a sentence using this word and uh, it did this time without giving us this uh, explanation that oh you misspelled it and all so this is how few short um, uh, you know prompting may be useful to us there is another use case for uh, few shot prompting which is uh, relating to the structure of output uh, very loosely uh, few shot prompting can also be used to give uh, to get the response in a specific structure so what what i mean is uh, when we saw this zero shot prompting here when when we get the answer right for, for in some cases it was giving like classification positive classification negative but in neutral case it gave this whole sentence it didn't give classification neutral so it's not consistent in giving the answers it's changing its format the the format of response so if we are uh, you know connecting two systems and llm is a is a system that provides its output to another system where we want to parse the output and we want to do something then this becomes very difficult so in that case we want llm to provide the answer in a very structured way right so that we can parse it and actually extract the answer whatever we need the labels that it's classif class classification label and we can process it further uh even here like translation we we might only need like like the translated sentence not we might not need uh, all these other things like uh, you know uh, like the housekeeping sentences and all so few short prompting can also be uh, one way uh, to improve the structure you know by giving the examples so when we write these uh, outputs maybe it will copy the structure of the previous outputs as well that is the intuition so uh, let's see an example let's take the example of the sentiment classification uh, problem itself here comes another tag now uh, in the in the last uh, video we also saw uh, the llama 2 chat 
prompt format contains the system message as well so this is how we can provide the system message now uh, what this prompt means is instruction starts here and ends here now within this instruction we are also specifying a system message so the system message is given only once in the prompt and in this case the system message is classify the text into neutral negative or positive and that's it and as soon as we come out of the system message we give this input we are not writing text colon or something uh, as done previously so i like this is the example sentence the actual input that we want to give and we end the instruction here and we label this as positive so uh, saying that this is what uh, the model had generated before and we also include another example i hate this and we say this is negative uh, just to say that uh, this is what uh, the model had generated before and then finally the third example we don't give the response for it expecting the response to come from the llm so uh, we say this is okay so when we run this it says neutral now you see the n is small everything is small and it just gave one word neutral uh, maybe uh, maybe we can try the exact same uh, uh, example that we saw earlier it is okay I, or i think it, it was it it was okay okay so it 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 was not it is okay it was it was okay <laughs> so when we try it was okay still we get the neutral so we are seeing like we we, we are getting like a perfect uh, you know like good structured output which we can parse so till here uh, it's our prompt and this is the output so we can just take the next word and consider that as the class label and you know process it further uh, this was this was this happened because uh, you know we provided these examples which were in specific format and it tried to mimic these this format that is present in the prompt this is how you can uh, you know guide the llm to uh, sort of uh, get that structured output uh, still this is not a very reliable method to do it uh, even fine tuning is is one way to you know structure the llm to generate response in a specific format so even that can be explored in some cases if a uh, few short prompting is not possible or uh, it's not giving better output another method that we'll see now is a uh, chain of thought prompting now this is also like a very interesting way of prompting and uh, researchers have found like this works better than uh, you know just giving it a problem so what chain of thought prompting means is uh, we are, if we give the llm a mathematical problem or some problem uh rather than it coming to the solution directly printing the solution directly it will be better if the model explains the solution step by step first and then reaches the final solution it's uh, experimented and seen like empirically that uh, uh you know it gives it just uh, starts generating more accurate answers this way if it uh, solves it step by step we'll see what exactly i mean by this so i'll just uh, uh given give this example so let's say this is the problem that we uh, are looking to solve this is it's a true or false question the odd numbers in this group add up to an even number so we just want to say if if this is true or false uh so if we take the odd numbers which is 15 5 and uh, and 13 and if we add it it becomes a uh, 33 which is not an even number so it the answer to this is false basically so you see even we while calculating we went step by step we first found the odd numbers we added it up and then we saw the solution if it is an even if it is an odd so we go step by step like this rather than just saying true or false so this is what the authors uh, of ch chain of thought also says like we should give like uh, chains of thoughts to the uh, before reaching the solution that becomes more uh, you know logical and uh, the the solutions the final answers also improve that is what uh, they are saying when we run this what happens is uh, it prints false which is uh, actually a correct answer uh, and it also tries to give this explanation so the explanation it gives is the sum of the odd numbers in this group is 15 plus 32 so it took this 32 which is not an odd number and it's adding these numbers up uh, it added it correctly it's actually 52 uh, if you take these three numbers and it says 52 is an odd number 
so this is also wrong uh, and that's why it's saying it's false it did give the give give the correct answer but it's giving like this this wrong explanation to us for some reason so uh, this is what it means like uh, this is where it it can go wrong so uh, what we can do is uh, we can give like few short examples uh, to it which uh, which tries to explain the steps what i mean is uh, we can give like some some prompt like this so we have added one only one example here uh, the the odd numbers in this group add up to an even number it's the it's the same thing and here we are not even uh, saying true or false since we are giving some uh, uh, answer to this so what we have done is we have taken a new uh, set of numbers and we are saying the odd numbers in this group are so first we are extracting out all the odd numbers 9 15 and 1 from this group 9 15 and 1 uh, remaining are even <laughs> so the and the and the sum is uh, 25 so these three numbers add up to 25 is what we are saying and then we are saying 25 is odd so we are going step by step it's 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 like a it's like a chain of thoughts <laughs> you can say and then uh, since this is odd that's why the answer is false we are saying and then we stick this same problem that we have here here we just uh, stick it at the end and uh, hoping to get like a better uh, you know solution for this so here what we get is now odd numbers in this group are 15 5 and 13 15 5 and 13 which is correct and the sum is 33 which is again correct 33 is odd which is correct that's why the answer is false so you see uh, it's it's generating uh, this answer in the same fashion first of all and it's also going step by step just looking at this example so the way uh, the above problem was solved that's the exact route that this problem also took this is uh, so this is how like we can force uh, our models to you know go step by step by giving like previous questions in few short examples and uh, solving them step by step as well so llm would think like okay even this this problem we should solve it step by step and it will go uh, one thought at a time so it will create a chain of thoughts <laughs> and it will reach the final answer like this now this chain of thought it's a, it's a there's a better way to do it uh, people say uh, like rather than giving it examples uh, because you know creating these examples is also tedious right so we can do chain of thought in like uh, somewhat like a zero shot manner so what uh, researchers or people say is uh, we use this uh, kind of sta statement at the end let's think step by step uh, so this is again the same question uh, that uh, that is that we are trying to solve here which gave like correct answer but wrong explanation here we got correct explanation and correct answer but uh, we had to give an example here which is again hand curated or manually curated so rather than uh, even uh, you know to save up on that we can write the question and we can add like this this simple prompt like let's think step by step and leave it uh, thinking that uh, llm would go step by step uh, looking at this and it will reach the solution slowly rather than uh, giving the final answer directly so when we run this so for uh, for this example particularly it doesn't work <laughs> it gives the uh, answer as true and even the explanation is wrong it uh, took 32 and what not so it's a complete mess <laughs> here at least uh, but uh, yeah like this is uh, one way to do it uh, in this case it didn't work maybe uh, in some other cases it's better uh, or it works better you can test it out uh, but here i also want to make another comment that uh, there are two things here one is uh, we are using the 7 billion parameter llama model which is a small model so what we can do is we can uh, definitely try out with the 70 billion or even 13 billion uh, parameter model which might uh, improve the this uh, response that we are getting uh, it it might have given the correct answer here itself if it was a bigger model maybe who knows so that is one part that is one part the second part is uh, i would say like uh, for these uh, numerical tasks right if the number is odd or even and uh, and adding adding the numbers basically so llm is basically a language model 
it only knows language it's trained on the completion task the next word prediction it's not really trained or it doesn't know like the mathematical uh, operations or how to add up numbers and all all of those things so there are these other things like um, how we can uh, you know uh, allow llm to act or basically what it means is we can allow llm to output an api call and that api call will be something uh, can can be anything like it can be something like to a calculator let's say so uh, it can make an api call saying hey add these three numbers or something so that is more of an llm oriented way of doing it so llm can at least generate that uh, an 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 api call needs to be called here uh, for adding these three numbers that is more language side it's not really adding the the numbers but it's just calling the api it's it's let's say it's printing the payload that needs to be sent so that is more uh, you know llm oriented rather than uh, more logical or calculator oriented which can be uh, uh, like like requested to a calculator so uh, this is where like the act comes into play uh, how how to make llms act you know they can, uh, calculator is just a simple example of an api the api can be anything now it can be like like web search maybe the llm wants to search something or get more information about something so it can get a response about something and then it can incorporate uh, the response in its answer to better give the answers right that is uh, the whole field of uh, you know making llms act and all that is a whole new part but uh, yeah this it's it, i have just mentioned it here so that you you know like uh, uh, it's it's better to keep uh, only the language related tasks to the llm and not give uh, numbers maybe even if uh, in some cases if numbers worked the addition and all still it's uh, not a good idea to uh, you know give these calculation kind of tasks to llm okay great i also would like to talk about uh, like this 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 chat kind of prompt you know when we say like uh, we have like a chat going on in that case how do we you know prompt these llms so uh, specifically we'll take some examples and maybe through those examples you'll know uh, like how how and what is what exactly is going on so here in the in the chat uh, uh, scenario or uh, when we are prompting for chat the system message becomes very useful it defines how uh, you know how you want your chatbot to talk to you or how do you want your chatbot to respond to people so let's take this example like uh, we are defined a system message here which say which says respond only by quoting from tv series friends so uh, yeah this is a like like can be an interesting use case where you want your uh, chatbot to only talk like uh, you know friends uh, tv series so we have given an input here hi and we have ended the instruction here so this comes and inside the whole instruction and we have given one system message so uh, you'll see how this uh, unrolls a uh, system message will only be given once i'll show you like uh, uh, after doing one turn of chat how we can uh, you know sort of unroll this so when we run this uh, it gives a uh, output as uh, how you doing so uh, like uh, it's kind of working uh, you uh, people might know like it's actually from friends now that we got a response what we can do is we can uh, call the same prompt again but we can uh, add this output here uh, in the prompt now again so what this means is uh, this chat is going on uh, like you can imagine like there's a loop here that we have written which takes this output and puts it again back in the prompt and now we can again uh, write these instruction uh, sort of tags and we can put another message here let's say we put our uh, favorite example here again what is the capital of india uh but you see like this is the basically the chat history we have only initialized the system message once which says how the chatbot should act and we keep on appending uh, to the prompt all the history that is there so uh it can also respond based on the history of the chat so when i run this we get uh, oh india <laughs> things <laughs> let me see pauses uh, oh i know this one smiling the capital of india is drum roll <laughs> delhi wink oh and it says like uh, joey tribiani 
so <laughs> maybe joy tribiani would speak like that but uh, you see we have gotten the answer delhi and uh, it 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 gives like a very uh, you know nice format uh, for us to respond to in the chatbot now next what we can do is we can take this output and we can again uh, append it in the prompt and uh, when the next user query comes it can be again appended in the prompt and the whole whole history remains so this is how we can keep the history and we can keep prompting and we can keep adding to the prompt uh, this is what like the chat uh, the, the chat prompt looks like let me show you one more example so in here i have put uh, system messages respond only using emojis uh, this is uh, also mentioned in the lama2 paper where uh, you know we only tell the chatbot to respond only in emojis so uh, this is what i had tried uh, when i write hi it gave response as this so i've added this in prompt now and when i asked what was the capital of india it it gave me this flag which is uh, maybe decent response given that only emojis can be uh, responded with and uh, then i'm asking it to show me some dance moves uh, to which it uh, it responded with some dancing emojis which is again uh, very impressive so this is how the system message and you know the chat responses can be used let me show you one more example where uh, you know the history uh, is is uh, where the history of the chat is again useful so uh, let's write the system message something like uh, like a normal uh, res response uh, i mean if if we want to keep the chat normal we need not even mention the system message we can uh, just mention the uh the instructions so hi and it says hello uh and uh it says uh, oh, oh, or let's say let's say i write hi my name is yash uh it says uh, hello yash and then i ask what is the capital of india maybe let's let's say it responded with delhi and then i'm asking uh what's my name and let's see uh, what it responds so so it says your name is yash and this is purely based on the history so i have i have told my name before and uh, i have asked something else now and then i have asked what's my name so it's uh, again able to you know figure out based on the chat history uh, that okay the name is yash and uh, so, you, so you see this is how it becomes useful so uh, again i can put this here uh, in the prompt and i can uh, frame another question let's say something like uh, what is his age or something so you see it's saying like it doesn't have access to the personal information uh, and all it it it's not giving uh, the responses and but but maybe if i ask uh, if if i add here and i am 27 so it says yash is 27 years old here so you see it's like based on the chat history if i'm giving some information here in the in in some previous uh, you know like the turn of transaction of chat you can say based on these transactions of the conversation it is uh, able to figure out the answer here which is uh, again very interesting and very nice so yeah that's all like uh, there are more a uh, lot of prompting techniques and all uh, uh, there is also like chaining of prompts so you can uh, you know imagine building like a system now where there are each individual components and every component uh, uses an llm so maybe we begin with uh, classifying the intent and then another uh, llm would say like okay this intent if this intent is triggered then we take this action or something so it predicts the next action or something so you can imagine like a whole system of components and each component is using an llm and then each llm is is engineered or or the prompts of these llms are engineered in such a way which takes input and gives output in a specific fashion and this is how you can uh, you know build like a whole system uh, just based on llms uh, which which might be useful to you so yeah that's about it uh, that was all uh, about this prompt engineering uh, notebook hope you enjoyed it and and hope you will be able to uh, you know better write your prompts now that's all uh, thank you thank you so much i'll put the code link in the description as well as uh, my linkedin if you want to connect consider liking and subscribing as well thanks bye